Want to travel to California? That too, in a bullet train? You won't have to wait long though, as California's bullet train seems to finally have the funding and the legal authorization to finish its first leg, marking a significant development for the nation's most expensive public infrastructure project. How to connect that initial 171-mile route across California's agricultural Central Valley to population hubs in Los Angeles, San Francisco and San Jose, as well as how its designers will get around the state's rugged topography and seismic concerns remain challenges. So, without wasting any more time, let's get started. But before we start, we would be grateful if you would subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get updates about our upcoming videos. With that said, let's get into it. In June, state lawmakers decided to release the $4.2 billion set aside for the train's initial phase, which runs between the medium-sized cities of Bakersfield, Fresno and Merced. Additionally, the project might gain more than $2 billion in government money from the Bipartisan Infrastructure Act for passenger rail. The train's total cost might reach $105 billion, and the track length would increase to 500 miles if services were extended to the San Francisco Bay Area and Los Angeles. When California voters passed a $10 billion bond measure to assist in constructing it in 2008, the initial cost was around $40 billion. It's not an easy task to build a system like this, said Brian Kelly, CEO of the California High Speed Rail Authority. It's a tough slog, but it's one worth doing. Four years ago, after early management failures jeopardized public support, the state hired Kelly, a seasoned transportation executive, to get things back on track. Priorities included overcoming legal obstacles and acquiring all the land required to construct even the first reasonably flat phase. Electric trains will someday travel at speeds of more than 200 miles per hour, on the 119 miles track of concrete viaducts and other currently constructed structures. Work will soon start on the remaining 52 miles that have already received funding. Importantly, Kelly and his group have also acquired more than 90% of the land required to continue developing. The project is alive and well and creating employment opportunities for thousands of workers who are engaged in the most innovative and transformative project our nation has seen in almost 75 years said Karen Philbrick, executive director of the San Jose State University's Mineta Transportation Institute. The legislative support to advance an electrified HSR segment between Merced and Bakersfield is incredibly meaningful. Critics see a disaster where Philbrick perceives potential. According to Oakland-based attorney Stu Flashman, who filed a lawsuit to stop funding for the train's first phase because it was unconstitutional, this is a huge waste of money. My clients don't feel it's ever going to result in a viable high-speed rail line, said Flashman. Whereas Philbrick said, it's the most transformative project our nation has seen in almost 75 years. Late last year, the California Court of Appeals decided against Flashman, allowing construction to proceed. This triumph and recent financial developments have given the train some temporary stability. It represents a significant change from a few years ago when former President Donald Trump vowed to recoup $2.5 billion that the Obama administration had distributed by withholding $929 million in federal funding that had been granted years earlier. President Joe Biden, a longtime train commuter, reinstated those fundings in 2021 and supports additional bullet train projects for the employment they will create and to reduce greenhouse gas emissions from automobiles. The California project gets around $1 billion yearly from the state's cap and trade program, a de facto carbon tax on significant emitters of greenhouse gases. It forecasts that it will take less than three hours to go from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Even if the infrastructure funding for Build Back Better was never passed, California has access to a pool of additional fresh federal funds for future requirements. We identified out of the infrastructure bill six different programs that we can compete in for different project elements, Kelly said. Those six different pots total about $70 billion over the next five years. The first train orders may be filled as early as next year. Siemens, which has a passenger train manufacturing facility in Sacramento, and Alstom, which constructs passenger trains at facilities on the East Coast, both have Amtrak contracts 
and will probably compete for California's business. There's several other train manufacturers from around Asia and the world building high-speed trains, Kelly said. There's no shortage of suppliers. Auto-obsessed high-speed railway is a system commonly accessible throughout Europe, China, Taiwan, South Korea and Japan, which invented the technology 60 years ago. Still, America remains a global laggard in this area. The fastest line in the United States is Amtrak's Acela service, connecting New York and Washington with a max speed of 150 miles per hour, while some trains travel up to 220 miles per hour. Amtrak is replacing its current Acela trains with new Alstom trains that will increase the Northeast Corridor's profitable maximum speed to 160 miles per hour. Future upgrades to the track ought to raise that even higher. California is not the only state with fast aspirations. With top speeds of 125 miles per hour, Florida-based Brightline, the only private passenger railway in the United States, will extend its Miami to West Palm Beach service to Orlando in 2019. The postponed Brightline West, a train from Las Vegas to suburban Los Angeles, that could take people at 200 miles per hour when service starts late this decade is also expected to receive new revenue proposals and an updated timetable from the firm, managed by Wes Edens, a co-owner of the Milwaukee Bucks and co-founder of Fortress Investment. The Texas Central Railway, a different private venture, anticipates starting work shortly on a 240-mile high-speed line connecting Dallas and Houston. A Pacific Northwest route that would transport people through fast trains from Portland, Oregon to Seattle and Vancouver, British Columbia, has also started to be planned. But the Golden State confronts the same problems with all the programs, getting the billions of money needed to make them a reality. Critics of the California project have long contended that constructing a system along Interstate 5, the tortuous backbone roadway that links Los Angeles to the Bay Area, would have been quicker and less expensive. Jerry Dyer, the mayor of Fresno, is uncomfortable with the notion since it would exclude the communities in the Central Valley. Those are the types of comments that led to the creation of I-5 many years ago that caused Fresno and the Central Valley to be left out of the California economy. He said, This is an opportunity for Fresno and the Central Valley to be recognized as a part of California. Anyone who thinks that they can bypass Fresno and the Central Valley again doesn't have a heart for people. Although high-speed connectivity isn't feasible until the late 2030s, Merced, the northern terminus of the initial stage, will link to an existing regional commuter rail connecting to Sacramento and the Bay Area. The California High-Speed Rail Authority predicts that 50 million passengers will utilize the service yearly, covering transportation to San Francisco, San Jose and Los Angeles bringing in around $3.4 billion in fair income. Fresno's downtown streets are congested due to development, which will cause its almost 530,000 people problems for at least another year, while the Central Valley area is best known as the hub of the state's massive agriculture economy. Fresno's population is growing as a result of the COVID epidemic as Californians who can work remotely are drawn to the city's reasonably reasonable housing and expense of living. According to Dyer, high-speed rail will make it much more alluring, especially if the line connects to San Francisco and Los Angeles. This has stimulated a lot of interest in terms of venture capitalists and others who have expressed an interest to come in and develop in Fresno, he said. But it's important on our end that we not allow people to come in and buy buildings and land bank to wait for the development to occur, but to develop now in anticipation of high-speed rail. Aside from ballooning expenses and financial issues, enormous engineering challenges also loom. These involve digging tunnels through the Pacheco Pass north and the San Gabriel and Tehachapi mountain ranges south. Additionally, the system must be constructed to withstand the state's notorious earthquakes. California is utilizing international experience in such fields, such as engineers from Japan, who have overcome comparable geographic difficulties. California's design requirements will be examined and commented on by a technical advisory team of international professionals. According to Kelly, the upcoming section will probably be constructed to link Merced and San Jose. How and when we do the next segments beyond the Central Valley will come down to where funding is most available, he said. Our job is to get it ready to go, and then when funding is there, we will be ready to move. It looks like the Bay Area would be first now, but we'll have to see 
how it all shakes out. So guys, that's pretty much it. When do you think this bullet train will be operable? Let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to give a thumbs up to our video. See you next time. Till then, take care.